Hey, what's up? This is A2Poster here. We've talked spring summer trends and in the interest of changing seasons, I wanna have a look at some cool and interesting things that I've purchased recently to help guide me through the next couple of months. We've got some acronym, we've got some outlier pants, we've got a new sweater, we've got a couple of cool jackets, we've got some stuff that we've never talked about on this channel before, which I'm definitely excited to show you guys. So there's a lot of things, some of them definitely play into that spring summer 2022 trends idea, but there's some stuff in here which I just personally like as well. So there's a bit of a mix of comfortable stuff and some new bits as well. Let's get going. We might as well get the acronym out of the way first with the J90SS. This is actually from AW21, although it hung around until the end of the season, so I picked it up fairly recently. I don't think it's been hugely popular. I feel like there's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, well, it's a lot more understated or unassuming than many acronym pieces. And when the retail price is so high, this came in over $1,000, I think, there are frankly a lot of bomber jacket options, many of which will be more obviously exciting looking compared to this. The color is a bit unusual as well, Schwarzrock, literally black red. Um, it's the first time the acronym have made use of this color. It's a kind of reddy brown, desaturated kind of color, which I quite like, but it doesn't quite fit into the standard acronym military uniform kind of palette, so it may be a little bit harder to style there. It does have some interesting features though. It's got a few acronym standard ones. You've got dual entry pockets. You've got an internal jacket sling. You've got the org zip on the back of the collar as well. I like what this does to the collar. It gives it this dual layered kind of look, which is this real kind of small standout aesthetic piece for me, which I think is quite nice. It's got this little dual button on the zip track as well, just inside it. So you've got a couple of different ways of fastening this. And of course at the cuffs, you've got these thumb holes here as well for a little bit of added warmth and protection. And on the left hand side, there's a little zip for a watch viewer so you can check the time without having to sort of de thumb cuff yourself. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this. When the cuffs are equipped, they look a little bit saggy on the hand. And because of the material, they don't provide that much warmth or coziness. I just feel like I kind of have some material over my palms. But when you're not using them, you have a little bit of material bunching at the wrist, which is not mega flattering, which is a big shame because I think elsewhere, the jacket actually fits really well and looks pretty good on me. That one thing alone does make me hesitate to recommend it. I've also heard people talk about the material, the WB400 uh, delaminating quite easily, where the layers uh, will separate, which is impossible to undo, and it gives a sort of nasty wrinkled effect, affects performance as well. I feel like these kinds of things can get overblown because people will repeat the same sort of opinion a lot and it gets kind of circled around a lot. Personally, I've not had that experience yet, but nonetheless, something I wanted to mention, um, it definitely has happened to some people. I was quite interested in the material. It was one of the big reasons why I wanted to pick this up. And not only do I like that face fabric, having a slightly coarse hand, but being slightly stretchy and pliable too, but the backer is a really soft but substantial moleskin like fabric, which makes the jacket feel very weighty overall without being too hot or stifling. To me, that really separates this from other lightweight or non-insulated bombers. And I'd say it feels more luxurious than your typical acronym piece. Bit of a weird one. It's definitely not my favorite thing from acronym, but like with many of their pieces, I'm sure it's something that I'll see the value from more and more over time. For many people though, the J90DS is probably gonna be the better bet, not to mention cheaper. If we're talking value though, why not invest in some personal development rather than just stuff? That's why I'm very happy to say that the paid sponsor of this week's video is Skillshare. Glad I finally got the chance to give it a go because I'd really like to expand what I can do creatively. This is partly in a direct sense. They've got loads of courses about YouTube related stuff and photo editing, which I can use to help make better content for you guys. But there's also loads of videos to explore around drawing and illustration. And I feel like historically, this has been a bit of a creative weak point for me and definitely something I'd like to do more of. I felt a bit embarrassed about starting to learn to draw because I feel like it takes a while before you can really do anything competently. But they have a bunch of classes that start from the absolute basics, like this learn to draw series from Gabrielle Bricky and basic skills with Brent Everston. Even though I'm just starting out here, I can definitely already see some progress. Here's my nice little monkey that I drew here. And I would love to be able to get to that stage where I can just draw simple things competently. I also picked up some great tips on script writing and B-roll from Marcus Brownlee, who's personally someone whose content I really admire. So that was pretty cool. Anyway, the whole platform's ad-free, of course, with loads of really high quality videos. And you can do everything on your own terms. You know, you don't need to show up at 9 a.m. every day with your pencil. And I think that flexibility will be really helpful for me where I can just dip in and out of stuff whenever I like. I imagine a lot of you value 
value building those kinds of creative skills. So you'll definitely find some interesting stuff in here. But even in a more general sense, you've got stuff about productivity, health and well-being, plant care even. Take a look with the link in the description and see what you think. The first thousand people will get a free month of Skillshare, which is easily enough time to pick up something cool. And the picking up something cool continues because I have a nice transitional pickup from Taiwan brand Goopy made here. I went to Manchester retailer this thing of ours last week where I picked this up alongside a couple of other things that we'll get to next. They carry a load of brands that are pretty difficult to find elsewhere, so it was really good to be able to check some of this stuff out in person. This is super soft and comfy though with that signature oversized fit to it. Accentuating that is the double cuff down here which lets the arm fabric almost fold over itself and the zip detailing at the hem as well with a contrast zip pull adds a little bit of complexity to this piece. While I'm not that big on the back logo here, the front one is of course much more subtle and it's got a nice colour too, it's quite delicate and quite different to other things that I own. I may well just end up wearing this around the house because it really is super comfy, but also looking forward to uh, experimenting and sticking this in some different outfits. This isn't the only thing I picked up though, I didn't get one but two new jackets and I know it's spring summer but look it's me, you couldn't expect me not to buy more jackets. And the first one was technically for the girlfriend but it still fits me pretty well so I'm definitely going to end up stealing it. It is this great looking Descent number here, they're a Japanese brand that do a lot of ski wear and performance outerwear but also have a couple of different sub brands that allows them to experiment with some other kind of looks. This is from Descent All Terrain which is the more urban focused line and as you can see comes in this super nice khaki grey colour. These high set pockets aren't the easiest things to access for day to day use but being traditionally used to stop them being blocked by hip straps and climbing equipment makes this look super super performance ready. Interesting feature on the hood, it doesn't quite fold away but it does zip up to help tuck it away a bit so stops it from flapping around when not in use. The best part though is this dual centre zip, you can use the narrower setting for quite a clean look when you don't want to put too many layers underneath, perfect for spring summer weather but you still potentially need that water resistance but you can put this on the looser setting as well which reveals this nice little tiny mesh panel here and this cool all-terrain branding as well which looks quite nice. It's a more technical look, it gives extra ventilation and breathability at the front and crucially allows you that little bit of extra room for a bit more layering if you need it. This is exactly the kind of thing that works great as a hiking jacket but could end up looking very futuristic and tactical when styled appropriately. So lots of versatility here. But my favourite of the this thing of ours pickups has to be this Poliquin jacket here. First of all, this sage colour is amazing. It's really light, it's very delicate looking, almost like a kind of faded mint green. Very unusual to see something like this in a piece of outerwear, which immediately drew me to it. And the overall fit and the shape of it I really like as well. The collar and the hood here in particular, when everything's zipped up, it looks very protective without being restrictive. It's got this really defined opening to it. And the whole jacket looks kind of oversized and relaxed without feeling too big. The dual front zip looks great as well, it looks like the whole jacket's being split apart and this front panel is the key to this jacket's transforming functionality. You've got a few different things you can do with this. First of all, you don't have to have this central panel here. Almost in a similar fashion to the Descent jacket, you can take this panel out and it becomes a much slimmer, more form-fitting jacket that you can wear with fewer layers. You could of course just then leave the extra panel at home or you could attach it to the hem at the back there to make sure that you've always got it with you and to add a little bit of extra protection at the back. Or you can even combine this with the external jacket sling at the back and turn it into this little bandolier style bag. I don't know how often I would use this in practice because I really like the look of the external sling at the back and the dual zips at the front. This is Antoine and Technical Jackets, name a more iconic duo, but I'm always a fan of cool features that do something a bit different and actually work how they're supposed to. One thing that I liked more than I expected to is the material here. So this is 100% nylon, but it actually feels almost cotton-like. It's got this very dry hand to it and it has a slightly coarse outer texture as well. It's just not really like anything that I own. From a usability perspective, the horizontal zipped pockets are not my preference, but I get how it fits in with the overall kind of retro aesthetic they're going for here. Another feature worth talking about that I already mentioned is the external jacket sling at the back. This is actually slightly different to the acronym design in that there is a little clasp here that secures it at particular lengths rather than using tension and uh, elastication like the acronym version does. I don't feel like this works quite as well, it's not quite as fluid and quick to do, but you know, 
props to them for at least attempting to do it slightly differently to the acronym version. I could go on for ages about this jacket, but definitely expect it to show up in future content because I think it looks great and it's a pretty unique addition to my wardrobe, I think. Coming into summer, we're definitely going to need some new shades and I've got a trio of them right here thanks to Smart Buy Glasses who sent me over a couple, so big thanks to them. The first two pairs are from their value collection, designed of course with affordability in mind, so I think both of these were about $30 to $40 each. This circular Smart Buy pair here are just mega wearable, but they're a little bit different to anything that I have previously because a lot of mine are the kind of slightly squarer style, so they're just that little bit different. Polarized as well, so you can still see everything where it's real bright conditions out there. Apart from my laptop screen, which is looking super weird, but that's what you get with polarized stuff. These ones here are from Arise Collective, and they've got this kind of smoky plastic look, which I thought was quite interesting. Again, polarized because I can't see what's going on over here, but they reminded me a little bit of the A Cold Wall and Super Future glasses, which have this similar kind of plastic clear but also not clear kind of thing and yeah I think these are one of these things that are pretty wearable overall because they've got a very classic silhouette but just with that little thing that makes them unique with this transparent finish it's just it's not your plain boring black pair of sunglasses something a little bit more fun and that's something I always value. The more exotic pair though are from Wise the Yoji Yamamoto diffusion line and I really like how they've got this kind of single bar design which forms not only the arm of the glasses but the bridge as well so you've got this it kind of looks like a single piece of material with the lenses just like hanging off there one of them in front and one of them behind so they're slightly off kilter as well it's a very unusual look um, but something that I thought was really cool very uh, intricate construction almost but still with these very simple very clear lines nice green color to the lenses too so I'm sure will fit in very nicely with the multitude of green things that I seem to be picking up Mercifully, the good thing about all of these is they fit my face fairly well as well. I am a giant headed individual, so sunglasses aren't always the most comfortable things, but I thought all of these were pretty good. So you'll definitely catch me wearing all three of these. I'll leave links to all three of those in the description. And although this isn't a paid feature or anything, they did give me a discount code, which is Antoine10. So you can use that for 10% off the site. They do have a pretty massive selection as well. So you'll probably find something interesting. A lot of these pickups are fairly well within my usual style. Something that's a bit different though, are the bomb flows from a US brand outlier. I featured them in loads of past videos praising them for their interesting material choice combined with uh, elevated basics or in some cases more unusual experimental pieces and we definitely have the latter here. We're taking it back to the 90s, the kind of j and Co jeans aesthetic with these bad boys. Recently I've been feeling wider pants more and more. I suppose these are the ultimate test of how far I'm willing to go. I think they look significantly wider on me in fact than they do in the product pictures. But to be honest I think this shape is actually really Really on trend. I could definitely see these being paired up with some big chunky Balenciaga shoes or something and it working super well in contrast to a lot of their non-experimental products which are very much about going under the radar but using the interesting material choices to kind of elevate beyond regular clothing. In the material sense these are no different. You've got this super structured nylon elastane blend here which leads to these really defined folds kind of crunchy looking there which I think is crucial with a cut like this because what you do don't want is the whole length of the material sort of collapsing. But unlike denim, it's lighter and more breathable, so more comfortable and airy than a denim equivalent would be. And thanks to the elastane, you got a little bit of two-way stretch in there as well. These are $275, which I feel like is a fairly sensible price for a high quality and appropriate material paired up with a fashion forward silhouette. It's not just the shape that differs to my usual style though, the fabric has a much more traditional look to it, I think, than many of the other fabrics I tend to go for. So it will suit more relaxed fits and oversized things more than an ultra technical jacket, for example. But I do feel like I'm gaining more and more pieces that would be appropriate for that kind of look. Even that poliquin jacket, for example, I think would fit into this kind of look fairly well. So I'm looking forward to using these to propel some of my outfits in a slightly different direction. One thing I think I'm missing at the moment here is shoes. A lot of what I've got is more kind of futuristic sportswear type stuff, whereas I feel like something super retro, super chunky is really going to look best here. So maybe I need to pick something new up for that. What I tend to find without 
outlier though, because of its material-based and solution-focused approach, tends to make quite a good base for then building off. So I feel like these pants are no exception. They're gonna be a bit of a blend between outlandish with this far wider cut and wearable with the color, the clean seam-free construction and appropriate material. Future fits definitely coming with these. Speaking of shoes, I got sent this pair from Karayuma, which are a skate brand. They did this collab with Atari and uh, the epic gamer that I am, of course, jumped at the chance to get a pair of those. Um, they don't differ that much to the regular versions. They have the little logo there. They've got a pixelated logo as well. Um, but they have a pro model with Mike Vallely as well. And growing up, he was like one of those skaters that I thought was super cool. So um, yeah, definitely the brand gets some cred for that for sure. But I actually found these more comfortable than I expected. They'll make a good skate shoe, that's for sure. So looking forward to giving these more of a go. And one final item, I spoke about this on TikTok already, but I grabbed this a cold wall lanyard because it was 90% off on 18 Montrose. Uh, so I spent 10 pounds on this thing thinking, you know, it's just gonna be a regular lanyard. I'll chuck it on a bag or something. Um, but when it showed up, it was absolutely enormous. I mean, you can see how big this thing is. Like this is, no one's gonna use this as a lanyard. It's actually big enough to use as a crossbody bag. So I'll maybe see if I can attach something to this and then yeah, actually use it kind of over the shoulder or something. Um, the other thing though, which was actually good, it came with two removable patches, which I've now taken off um, and attached to my Tillac jacket. So that alone, I think, makes it worth a tenner because now I can rep the A Cold Wall brand uh, wherever I'm going, thanks to that. So not bad. A cheap way to represent an interesting brand, I suppose. And as you probably gathered, we will have some more A Cold Wall coming soon, probably next week. That's everything though, a little bit of variety here. Let me know which of the pieces here was your favorite. That definitely helps guide me into what thing I should make more videos about in future. As I've said a few times, that Poliquin jacket, I'm quite excited about wearing a little bit more, but there's a few things here which I feel like I can end up getting some decent use out of. Either way, there's loads of other videos that I've got in the pipeline and looking forward to releasing, so keep an eye out for some of those. And shout out to Flame Silver who liked the idea of the Air Force carabiners, even though he's not a fan of the regular Air Force ones. So there you go, Nike, you're converting some people by uh, doing some interesting experiments with that shoe. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you wanna catch them all, there's gonna be links going up at the top. And thanks in advance if you've hit that subscribe button. Uh, it's much appreciated. As you guys know, it massively helps out the channel. We've got some cool new videos coming up. We've got the A Cold Wall sneakers. They'll probably be next week or the week after and some more fun things in the pipeline as well. So stay tuned for those.